We know New York for its fashion, films, and food. We also know New York for its incredible skyline, one any architect would kill to have a hand in curating. It's a perfect blend of new, modern, sleek structures like the Steinway Tower and classic, elegant structures like the Woolworth Building, which is now a National Historic Landmark. The number of skyscrapers in this city is higher than any other city in the world, including London and Dubai. New York's skyline is not only a testament to its stunning design and architecture, but also its resilience. After the tragedy of 9-11, New York bounced back and built the One World Trade Center building on the same site. Today, it is the tallest building in the United States and the sixth tallest in the world. And in the last decade, even more skyscrapers have come up thanks to the construction boom. In the last seven years, 36 new towers have come up, and as of late 2019, the city has 15 buildings that have been built at or topped out 1,000 feet. And aside from those completed or topped out towers, New York has many skyscrapers under construction, a lot of them over 990 feet tall. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to take a look at some upcoming skyscrapers that will transform the New York City skyline by 2030. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified every time we upload a video. Number 6. The Spiral 1,003 feet Also called the 66 Hudson Boulevard, this unique work of art is located on 34th Street between Hudson Boulevard and 10th Avenue. It will go up 66 floors with 2.85 million square feet of space. The structure is designed by a Danish architectural firm, Bjarke Ingels Group, which also developed the nearby West 57, the pyramid-shaped tower rising over 400 feet. The spiral has a series of terraces that climb up the glass structure in a spiral, forming a green pathway wrapping around the building. The architecture features unique classic Manhattan stepbacks that twist toward the sky and provide tenants with lush green terraces. The interiors feature soaring ceiling heights throughout the building, lots of green spaces, open floor plans, and spectacular views of the Hudson River and Central Park. This building's working spaces have already been leased out by a few notable companies, including Pfizer Inc., the American Pharmaceutical Corporation, Alliance Bernstein, a global asset management firm, and Debevoise & Plimpton, a law firm. Number 5. 45 Broad Street, 1,200 feet. Once finished, 45 Broad Street will become Lower Manhattan's tallest residential tower. The 68-story building in the financial district actually comes with an interesting bit of history. The site for 45 Broad Street was first owned by Swig Equities, and they wanted to build the Nobu Hotel, a project which was backed by the famous actor Robert De Niro. That hotel would have been designed by Moed de Armas and Shannon. It would feature a conventional glass curtain wall with interiors by David Rockwell. It would have had 128 hotel rooms, 77 super luxurious condos from the 41st to the 62nd floors, and completed in 2010. But in 2009, Swig defaulted on a $49.2 million mortgage from Lehman Brothers, leading to foreclosure. Madison Equities acquired the land in 2014, and renderings of the 45 Broad Street building was finished two years later, and clearly it was a hit. Designed by Cetra Roddy, which also made one Madison, the building has a bronze aluminum cladding and a distinctive crown, making it one of New York's first Neo Art Deco skyscrapers. Number 4. 9 DeKalb Avenue, 1,066 feet. Originally called the 340 Flatbush Avenue Extension, this site was first owned by J.P. Morgan Chase, who used the space as a bank branch. In 2015, Fortress Investment Group provided $115 million to JDS and the Chetrit Group as a loan to acquire the property. After that, Bank OZK and Melody Finance issued $135 million, replacing Fortress's loan. The construction for the very first super tall building in Brooklyn finally began in mid-2018. The building incorporates the historic Dime Savings Bank building designed by Mowbray and Uffinger. It's clad in stone, bronze, and stainless steel. The architects, Shop, have stated that the firm took inspiration for the structure from the Dime Bank building, with its vertical features mirroring that of the bank's columns. Once finished, it will have 73 stories with 150 condos, 425 apartments, and 140,000 square feet of commercial space throughout. At the current pace of construction, it will quickly eclipse the Brooklyn Point, which is currently the borough's tallest building. The nearby Dime Savings Bank will be converted into an upscale retail space and could possibly be an entrance to the new building. Number 3. Tower 5th, 1,555 feet. The facade of Tower 5th is designed by Gensler, and it will feature a closed cavity system that reduces solar heat gain by 70%. The structure reaches a cantilevering observation deck consisting of multiple floors at the top. Going up the form are floor plates spanning 19,800 square feet with column-free floor plans and a line of windows much like 432 Park Avenue. The eighth floor has a wellness center with an indoor pool and a running track, and the 80th floor has a sky lobby called the Sky of America. Renderings show a large open 
air platform, a restaurant with a wraparound floor-to-ceiling glass wall, and a vertigo-inducing rectangular U-shaped glass floor like the protruding skywalk at the Grand Canyon. Gensler is speculated to be the designer of Tower Fifth, and their renderings of the project leave little to be desired. The main lobby at ground level will feature a through-block hallway lined with white marble, spanning the depth of the lot. In a striking design flourish, the tower will sit atop a narrow pedestal that rises nearly 400 feet above the street. The balancing of the building above these structural cores is not unlike the architecture of the Citigroup Center. The tower's main portion will feature a regular grid of windows measuring about 15 feet wide with nine in a row. Once completed, this structure will be the 15th tallest building in the world and the tallest in New York City by roof height. The podium will house entrances to the elevators, a retail and food market in the cellar levels, an atrium that spans the full height, expansive seating areas, and a three-story auditorium. Demolition of nearby buildings for the plot has been put on hold for now. No completion date has been announced yet, but it's definitely a building we're all waiting on the edge of our seats for, especially given these renderings from Gensler. Number 2, 270 Park Avenue, 1,425 feet. Bringing down the existing 52-floor, 707-foot-tall 270 Park Avenue Tower will be the largest planned demolition in history after the 612-foot Singer Building. The structure is being demolished to make room for the new J.P. Morgan Chase World Headquarters, now called the J.P. Morgan Chase Tower. The high-rise office building in Midtown Manhattan is being designed by Foster & Partners. The renderings show a wide, open foundation that narrows as it reaches for the sky. The tiered design is said to mimic the wedding cake skyscrapers like the old McGraw Building on 42nd Street and the diagonal braces on its east and west elevations at a futuristic flair. The J.P. Morgan Chase Tower enjoys a premium location alongside one Vanderbilt, Tower Fifth, and the super tall and sleek structures on Billionaire's Row. The 70-story headquarters will have space for 17,000 employees across its 2.4 million square feet of space. Number 1. 350 Park Avenue, 1,450 feet. Amidst the evolution of the Manhattan skyline, one of the most notable changes has been the completion of the Midtown East rezoning, which has resulted in the rise of one Vanderbilt and new projects like the J.P. Morgan Chase Tower and Bornado and Rudin's plan for 350 Park Avenue. The tower will be an office building and have zero residences. It will span 1.68 million square feet with over 50,000 square feet of amenities. These will include an arts club, two sprawling dining rooms, one all day and one fine dining restaurant, and a sky terrace and sky lounge on the 53rd floor. The speculation is that Foster and Partners have been picked for this project too, and their plans were leaked thanks to a mysterious brochure created by Vornado and Rudin Management. It contains dozens of images for the project, featuring both interiors and exteriors, offering a surprisingly detailed look for something that is still years away from starting construction. It seems the design for 350 Park Avenue would be a dramatic departure from both historical and contemporary stylings that currently dominate the Manhattan skyline. It will feature a striking mix of classical massing proportions and an ultra-modern facade reminiscent of Foster's Hearst Tower. The tower is located next to 432 Park Avenue and 1 Vanderbilt, so it will be right at home with a super tall skyscraper family. And though it will be in the middle of the pack, it will clearly be able to hold its own in the overall midtown skyline. So with all that, it's safe to assume that by 2030, we'll have several new skyscrapers changing the skyline of New York where at one time a thousand-foot-tall building sounded terrific has now become the norm for New York City. Their impressive heights and unique designs will make the city look like you've just stepped into a hyper-futuristic sci-fi film. And who doesn't enjoy that? What do you think of these upcoming projects? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and check out others like this on the King Luxury Channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.